something is wrong with the universe. The James Webb Space Telescope turned its golden eyes to the edge of time. It didn't find what we expected. Colossal objects glowing with ultraviolet fire in a time when nothing should have existed. Not galaxies, not stars, not even dust. And yet, something was there, shining, daring us to question the beginning itself. Astronomers call it the Cosmic Dawn, a silent, forgotten age, barely 100 million years after the Big Bang, a time so early, so dark, that even light had barely begun to breathe. This was supposed to be unreachable, but James Webb saw something anyway. Nine objects, six of them impossibly distant, three beyond explanation. If these measurements hold true, they are the most ancient structures ever seen, and what lies within them might be older than stars, might be black holes born before time, or the first stars to ever burn. We don't know yet. But if what we're seeing is real, then our story, the universe, is wrong. Completely. This isn't just another anomaly. It's a crack in the timeline. And through it, something is staring back. The early universe was supposed to be empty. After the Big Bang, space expanded into darkness, a frozen void of neutral atoms, cooling in slow motion. It would take hundreds of millions of years before gravity could sculpt anything recognizable, before gas could settle, before light could return. This is what the textbooks say, what the simulations confirm, what every cosmologist believed. Until now, using data from two deep sky surveys, MIDS and NG, Astronomers fed Webb's infrared vision into the most ancient darkness ever studied, and there they found something waiting. Nine luminous specks buried in the void, six of them glowing from a redshift of 17, meaning their light began its journey just 200 million years after the beginning. That alone would shatter expectations, but it wasn't the limit because three of them appeared at redshift 25 which means they formed just 100 million years after the Big Bang. So early, so raw, that we don't even have language for what they are. Galaxies, maybe, but they're too bright, too massive, too structured, with estimated masses 10 million times that of our sun, and ages just 30 million years old. They burn with ultraviolet radiation and lack the cosmic dust we expect from their age. This makes them candidates for something never seen before, the mythical Population 3 stars. The first stars, born in pure hydrogen, untouched by heavy elements, colossal, short-lived, and impossible to observe. Until now, or maybe, these objects are not stars at all. Maybe they're something darker, something heavier, something the universe wasn't supposed to make so soon. To make a black hole, you need a star, a massive one, burning fast, dying young, exploding into silence. That's the rule, written into every model, carved into the backbone of modern astrophysics. But these objects, they don't follow rules, they mock them. They're too massive, too luminous, too early. Galaxies need time. Stars need generations. Even chaos takes structure to give birth. And yet, only a hundred million years after the Big Bang, something was already there. Dense, bright, ancient. The light we see now, that faint whisper across 13.6 billion years, originated from something so young. It barely had time to exist. So what are we looking at? Galaxies? Unlikely. Stars? Maybe. But a third possibility looms, darker than the others, heavier, far more disturbing. Primordial black holes, born not from death, but from pure pressure. In the first seconds of existence, the universe was a storm, turbulence, radiation, matter tearing itself apart as fast as it formed. In that chaos, tiny regions no larger than a proton, could have become so dense they collapsed instantly into black holes. No star, no light, just collapse. A fracture in the newborn fabric of space-time. These aren't leftovers. 
their origins. If they exist, they could explain many of our deepest cosmological puzzles. How do supermassive black holes form so early? Why are some gravitational waves too powerful to match our stellar models? Why do we keep finding giant objects where none should be? Primordial black holes might be the missing piece. The silent skeletons around which galaxies formed. The unseen architects of structure in a universe that otherwise shouldn't have had time. And now, James Webb may have glimpsed them, not directly, but through their fingerprints. Objects with too much mass, emitting too much light, too soon. There's no stellar life cycle that fits. No supernova explanation that survives the math. Some theorists believe these black holes could even make up part of the elusive dark matter, that the very gravity holding the universe together might come from ancient voids not particles. So if what we're seeing are truly primordial black holes, then we're not just rewriting one chapter of cosmic history, we're rewriting the beginning. Because it means the first things to ever form in the universe weren't stars, or gas, or galaxies. They were gravitational monsters, watching, waiting. We thought we knew how the universe began. A hot explosion, then darkness, then light. A timeline carved in radiation, predictable, linear, controlled. But what James Webb has seen doesn't fit, because if these objects at Redshift 25 are real, if they truly existed just 100 million years after the Big Bang, then our timeline is broken. Not warped, not stretched, broken. The standard model of cosmology, Lambda CDM, was supposed to explain everything. It gave us equations, simulations, a comforting arc from chaos to order. But these objects, too massive, too luminous, too soon, don't belong in that arc. They shatter the tempo. They don't crawl into existence. They erupt. Fully formed giants where only whispers should be. Burning bright before the universe had time to cool. Galaxies need hundreds of millions of years to assemble. Stars require structure, black holes, time to grow. So how do we explain what we're seeing? Some say the photometry must be wrong that these are mirages of data, artifacts of infrared noise, but the patterns are repeating, the redshifts are consistent, and the web is precise. So maybe it's not the data, maybe it's us. Maybe the very structure of time is different than we thought. Some physicists now entertain a radical possibility that the Big Bang wasn't the beginning, but merely the latest transformation. A phase shift, a rebound, a quantum ripple in an eternal ocean. In this view, what we call the early universe might actually be the afterglow of something much older. These structures at Redshift 25 may not be the first things to exist, but the last survivors of a previous universe. Fossils, memories, embeds in a cycle we don't yet understand. Even within this universe, the implications are staggering. If matter organized itself faster than our models predict, then what other rules are we misunderstanding? What if gravity behaved differently in the first few hundred million years? What if dark matter didn't just scaffold galaxies, but seeded them with purpose? What if time itself is elastic, folding and refolding in ways we've never imagined. As we peer into the abyss, the cosmos whispers something we never expected to hear. You were wrong. Not just about a number, not just about a date, but about everything. Because if these objects are real, if they are what they seem, then our universe didn't begin in silence. 
it began in contradiction. What if these aren't just distant galaxies? What if they're the first lights of the cosmos? Or the last echoes of something far older? What if the universe didn't begin when we thought it did? What if time itself lies? We build models. We trust equations. We believe in beginnings. But the deeper we look, the less sense it all makes. These nine objects, these ghosts from the edge of time, they weren't supposed to exist, and yet they shine. Defiant. Impossible. If they are stars, they are the first. If they are black holes, they are primordial. And if they are neither, then we are not ready. We may be staring at the remnants of a forgotten age, the fingerprints of a universe before ours, or the birth cry of something that rewrites everything. No matter what the answer is, one truth remains. The James Webb Space Telescope didn't just look further, it pierced the veil. And in doing so, it may have exposed the greatest illusion of all, that we ever understood the beginning. So if this kind of mystery speaks to you, if you feel the pull of the unknown, and you believe that truth still hides in the dark, then leave a trace, subscribe, hit the like button. And if you want to go even further, if you want to support this journey into the silence between stars, consider becoming a member of the cosmic unknown. You'll help us keep asking questions that science is only beginning to face. And together, we'll keep listening. Because out there, in the cold silence beyond time, something is still watching, and next time, it might come closer.